Hello, hello, hello. Okay, funny story. I had been talking to myself. I didn't press go live and I had just played the banner, like the countdown that you just saw. I played the countdown without going live and I literally was just talking to myself for the past five minutes thinking I was live. So hi, hi, <laughs> for real, for the second time. Oh, hi, Mr. Midwife. You were able to make hi. it. Hi, I was able to make it. Thank you for being here. So no worries. I thought I was live, but I wasn't. And I was just talking to myself for the past five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, what did the two of you decide? <laughs> oh, that I'm too burned out. I don't know if I'm going to keep doing YouTube. <laughs> so um, today we're going to be talking about a physician actually shared this article with me, uh, how Cigna saves millions by having its doctors reject claims without reading them. Mr. Midwife, as a midwife do you have to deal with uh, like prior authorizations or anything like that oh my goodness yes <laughs> can you yes, tell us a absolutely. little bit about maybe what so, prior authorizations are and yeah so um i i have a woman come in and this is just a, for example i have a woman come in who's got some vaginal burning itching um what have you she's perimenopausal um sex is fairly uncomfortable um i examine her take a look Everything looks okay, but she's vaginal dryness in the whole nine yards. So what I want to get for her is, um, like, if I can get some micronized progesterone in her, it will change her life. It'll, it'll absolutely change her life. Hot flashes slow down. She sleeps better. The brain fog lifts. Um, <laughs> vaginal moisture returns, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and everything just gets better for her. Um, and so I'll prescribe the micronized progesterone and the insurance will kick it back saying it's too expensive. Have you tried estrogen or birth control pills or anything else? And I kick it back and say, yes, all that's been tried. Um, we need to put her on this. Well, we don't really cover that. Well, why not? And it's just this whole back and forth. It's a big pain on the hind end. Um, you get the same problem when you've got somebody who's... Um, like, for example, uh, postpartum depression. You want to start them on some antidepressants. Well, that's not approved. Are you serious? Yeah. And so wow. it's this big old fight every time. And fortunately, antidepressants are fairly cheap. Even if you got to pay cash for them, it's like 10 bucks a month. It's, you know, start or well off or something. Um, but yeah, it's, it's this fight every single stinking time. And it's a big pain in the butt. It is. And the point is, as patients, we're paying monthly for this insurance plan that is supposed to pay our medical bills or help with them. And they really, truly are run just like a business. Like they, all they care about is profit. And it's sickening as a patient and it's sickening as a provider because many times you want to give a patient a certain medication, but you have to opt for something else because they can't, the patient can't afford it and the insurance refuses to pay for it. And I, you know, I totally get that. Um, it's a business, it's not a charity. Um, and they're here to make money. They're here to, to placate their shareholders and so forth. But like you said, I've been paying my premiums. I have. Um, and one of my favorite examples, um, many, many years, it was, it was more than 30 years ago because my oldest child is that old now. Um, got pregnant, went in, had a baby, and about six or eight weeks later, we get this really nasty red-lettered um, note from the hospital saying, pay up or else. And I'm like, pay up or else? We have really good insurance. So I called the insurance company. I said, um, hey, what's going on? How come these folks haven't been paid? And their, their return was, well, we're investigating and I got really belligerent on the phone with this person. I said, investigating what? It was a childbirth. There's nothing to investigate. Pay these people. Now, this is ridiculous. And I got a phone call back about an hour or so later from the hospital saying, oh, we just got the money. <laughs> what are you investigating? It's childbirth. There's nothing to investigate. Exactly. So, but it's like if you don't advocate for yourself and put up a fight, it's, they're counting on you paying that bill. Yeah, and this is where it's senior citizens and um, those that are uh, a little more sheepish than I am um, get in trouble because they, oh, well, I got denied by the insurance. I guess I have to pay it. Well, it's it was a legitimate claim, but because you didn't fight the denial, 
now you're out 1500 bucks or, or whatever it is. And mm -hmm. let's face it, some of these medications and treatments and tests and exams can be really, really costly. Yes. I was supposed to, um, I had some eye drops that were prescribed because I have Sjogren's. It was uh, Zydra and they were like $500 a month. My insurance also didn't cover it. So I just like, and I tried, I tried, you know, going back and forth. It's almost impossible. So I just gave up and then um, I, I opted for Restasis, but yeah, so I can't even, that one also my insurance doesn't cover. So I basically like live off of samples or it's just, or if I go to Columbia, I can buy the medication over there pretty much cheaper. Um, but it's just insane that we have to do that. Let me step out for 10 seconds. I'm going to hit sure. my studio lights. Hold on. I'll be right back. Sure. <clears throat> so this is, uh, I'll just call him Dr. Nick. Uh, this is, he's actually a physician and Dr. Nick was having some symptoms. He was having some um, bone pain and he had his doctor ordered a blood test, a vitamin D deficiency uh, blood test. Well, a vitamin D to test the levels of his blood, uh, of vitamin D. And it came back that he was deficient in it. However, so the, the point with this, oh, let me add Mr. Midwife again. No, I can't. Where's my, there we go. Okay. You're I'm back. only gone for a second. <laughs> I didn't know how quick you're going to be. <laughs> so Dr. Nick got a letter after he took this blood test and, um, they were charging him $350 because the test is not medically necessary. He lives in, uh, he's 58 years old and he lives in Maryland. Uh, the letter was signed by one of Cigna's medical directors, a doctor employed by the company to review insurance claims. He's a physician himself. He used to work in the UK. There's Dr. Nick. And um, he, he says that he, he was, that the letter didn't sit well with him and that he was suspicious of it. And his claim was just one of roughly 60,000 that Dopke denied in a single 60,000 in a single month last year, according to internal Cigna records. And the rejection of Dr. Nick's claim was typical for Cigna, one of the country's largest insurers. And then something I wanted to bring you is that this. Uh, so right here in the 32 minutes and nine seconds you've been on this page, Cigna's doctors could have denied 2,300, and then it just keeps counting according to company documents. So one way that they're rejecting all these claims is by using almost like an automated system that bundles all these claims and kind of think of like your email where you can just select all, it highlights all your emails and you just boom, delete them all. So they have, we literally click and submit one former Cigna doctor said it takes all of 10 seconds to do 50 at a time. So they're not even reading these claims. They're just using this system to deny them without reading them at all. So Mr. Midwife, sometimes like when you're charting or when I'm charting and we're trying to use all the correct ICD 10 codes so that perhaps it will get approved it doesn't, I mean, from what this is showing is like, it doesn't even matter because they're not taking the time to read them. Well, and this is where AI is both a help and a hindrance. Um, it sounds like, it just sounds to me like what's happening is they have an AI program that matches up an ICD-10 code with one of their approved treatments. Um, and if it matches, fine. But if I get the wrong ICD-10 code, um, and I say, I say something like, um, okay, so her symptoms are she's got hot flashes and dry vagina. Well, that doesn't line up with progesterone. That lines up with KY jelly. <laughs> so um, they're not going to approve the medication, that the, the one medication that will really help her out. It doesn't uh -huh. line up. So they say reject. Yeah. Um, instead of having somebody put their eyeballs on it. And, and I've, I've been on the phone with um, insurance companies as a provider saying, look, this is, I've tried this and that I need you to approve this medication and see if she improves. And if sometimes, not always, but sometimes if you say, I need to trial her on this for three months and then bring her back and look at it again. Sometimes you'll get a yes. Okay. We'll try it for three months, but then 
when you go back after that three month trial period and you say, yes, it did work. Yes, the symptoms are improved. Um, we need to put her on it for a year or a lifetime or whatever. They'll kick back and say, well, have you tried? We already had this discussion. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we've already tried this. Well, why are we? But it, it is extremely frustrating. It so is for very all you that are, yeah, for, for all you patients that are watching out there, um, I know it's frustrating for you. I feel your pain. I don't know what else to do. I've I've jumped through all the hoops that I can jump through, and some college, not even college, some high school graduate who's 19 years old who got a job working at, you know, health insurance company X, is denying the claim because it doesn't line up with their approved versus the ICD. But claim. a lot of these are actually, I mean, I'm sure it's not just physicians because I don't want to come across as I'm, I, I'm not, I'm very, I, I have a high respect for physicians and everything. You know, I've done some videos like with uh, Dr. Sarah Ernie, nurse practitioner, and I've got a lot of like negative feedback. I've had young, and it's disheartening because I've had young physicians that are still in residency school that I would think they're more open-minded, more modern and re related to like the role that NPs can play they're the main ones attacking me, not like the older, perhaps the older physicians that maybe don't are, are more old school, don't respect the NP or perhaps have more outdated views. No, it's a lot of the younger ones. So I just, I do have a lot of respect for physicians, but um, a lot of this is physicians rejecting these claims, which I mean, it's kind of like, how, like, ethically as a provider like how how do you just how do you sleep at night you know when 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 you're not reading through these claims and potentially your decisions are hurting someone um yeah that that's a really really good question and my answer is i don't know um <laughs> on the on the other hand if you're if you're getting sixty thousand letters you know, appeals or whatever on your desk every month, there's no way as, as a human that you can go through those 60,000 in a month and give them their due diligence. There's just no way. Um, even if you take two minutes, which is pretty scant, even if you just take two minutes per request, you're still, there's no way. There's just no way. I think that it comes down to, Again, Cigna's using AI to maximize profit. So as healthcare providers, we should take a stance and say, no, this is unethical. Every I know I, I know I'm an idealistic, but <laughs> every claim deserves a fair chance and a fair review. Um, so it does go on to say that not all claims are processed through this review system. For those that are, it is unclear how many are approved and how many are funneled to doctors for automatic denial. Insurance experts reviewed Cygnus review system. Patients expect insurers to treat them fairly and meaningfully review each claim, said Dave Jones, a California's former insurance commissioner. Under California regulations, again, California, um, you know, with the nurse patient ratios and just Cali seems to, I know they're not perfect, but they got a lot of, they got a lot of things right. Insurance must consider patients claim using a thorough, fair and objective investigation. And this is definitely not thorough. This is not fair. And this is not an objective investigation. It's hard to imagine that spending only seconds to review medical record complies with California law. At minimum, I believe it warrants an investigation. Well, and like you just said, seconds. You can't do a thorough exam in seconds. Um, I that's just and again, I'm I'm okay with AI, but the game they play is that unless you have the right ICD-10 code, we're going to deny the claim. Well, if but that's that's a that's a carousel. It's a revolving door. It's it's a game of whack-a-mole. What ID what ICD-10 code are you going to pay for this week for this treatment? And you have to guess. It's going in blind. It's a dark room, and you have to guess where they've moved the target. It's a to. moving target, yes. Yeah, and so like... you know, to, to get sometimes to get um, to get STD treatment paid for, you have to list it under STD exposure. But that's just this week. Next week, they're going to change it to high risk sexual behavior, which is different and it's not covered. But they don't tell you that in advance. They they constantly move the target, and you have to play. Okay. I have to guess this week, what are they going to pay for? 
And so, yeah, and the more IC10 codes you put down, if I put down three or four of them, then the patient gets charged for three or four of them, but you're just trying to cover yourself on what the insurance is going to pay for this week. And it my, so my friend recently, she had cervical cancer and her physician told her she needed surgery. Well, her insurance company denied the request for surgery and they said, oh no, you need to try these drugs first. And it just, you know, she was so angry, so irate because here's a solution where I could just have surgery or you're going to make prolong this, potentially allow the cancer to spread, make me try all these toxic medications that are harming my body because that's what, that's the route that the insurance company wants to go, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So some Cigna executives, they question whether rendering such speedy denial satisfied the law. It doesn't, but you know, they're, they're making it work. According to one former executive who spoke on condition of on an anonymity because he still works with insurance. He, he said, we thought it might fall into a legal gray zone. said the former Cigna official who helped conceive the program, we sent the idea to legal and they sent it back saying it was okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it is a legal gray zone. Um, but it's a really, really dark shade of gray. <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not black. It's like charcoal gray. Um, but they have had AI look at it and AI says it doesn't fit. And again, this is, I don't know how else to say that it. it's, it's a jigsaw puzzle where you're trying to make the pieces fit and you have to guess because you're putting this puzzle together in the dark mm -hmm. and you have to guess what they're going to cover this week because next week it's going to change. Exactly. It says former Cigna doctors confirmed that the review system was used to quickly reject claims An internal corporate spreadsheet viewed by the news organization's list, blah, 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 blah. The former doctor said the figures represent total denials. Cigna did not respond. And um, they then have, and this is a total bunch of baloney Cigna emphasized that its system does not prevent a patient from receiving care. It only decides when the insurer won't pay. But yeah, when your treatment costs thousands of dollars, you are preventing people from receiving care because they can't afford it. <laughs> well, I mean, you and I live in different states, right? We uh -huh. live basically across the nation from each other. I'm not stopping you from coming to see me. You're going to have to walk. <laughs> but, but you can come see me. Exactly. Um, and I'm not stopping you from getting the surgery that you need or the treatment that you need. It's going to cost you literally half a million dollars, but you can pay for it out of pocket if you want. You can make payments for the rest of your life and go broke, but sure, you can get it. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's it just is frustrating. It, it's just funny how they like, they refuse to take any accountability. So this is that AI system you're talking about. It's a PXDX. I'm not sure if that's how they pronounce it or if there's a different name for it. But uh, after leaving his practice, Dr. Alan Muni spent the next several decades advising insurance. And, and Okay, so this review system was developed by a former pediatrician. So it's kind of sad that a physician made it, but... You know, sometimes like you think you're maybe let's give him benefit of the doubt. Maybe he thought he was developing something that could potentially be for good. And now it's being misused to deny people's claims. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, if, if I go down and buy a brand new car today, um, I can drive that car and it works just fine. And the way GM or Ford or whoever it was that built it, built it for me to drive. But if I bring it home to the garage and I tweak it and put all sorts of parts on it and take some parts on and put other parts off and so forth, then it's not the same car. And it's entirely possible that's what he did. He built a product that he thought was going to match up ICD-10 codes with the agnostic criteria and all this other stuff. And um, when the, you know, when whatever insurance company got a hold of it, they tweaked it and put in their own um, parameters and, and this, that, and the other thing. And now it, it doesn't even look like the product that he originally built. So that's, that is entirely possible. Mm -hmm. So this, this other person, this Dr. Dobke, he rejected or he or she rejected 121,000 claims in the first two months of 2022, which is just astronomical numbers. 
Uh, let me see here. So this is a former Cigna executive. He says, put yourself in the shoes of the insurer. Why not just deny them all and see which ones come back on appeal? From a cost perspective, it makes sense. And Cigna that's knows. exactly what they do. <laughs> um, like I said at the beginning, you get the rejection letter. And if you're sheepish enough to not fight that, they just got lunch money. Cigna knows that many patients will pay bills, will pay such bills rather than deal with the hassle of appealing a rejection, according to Harrigan and other former employees of the company. And uh, like, I'm one of those people that are guilty of it. I just had um, surgery for plantar fasciitis and my bill was $5,000. And I, I just, I don't know my personality or what, I just don't have the energy to call these people, be on the phone. Like I'm so busy. And it's just like to be on the phone and fight and be like, why aren't you paying this? You should pay. Like, I know. And it's a lot of money, but I, so when I thought when I was fake live, like when I thought I was live and just talking to the camera, <laughs> I was saying how I added up all of my medical expenses from last year and I paid over nine, $19,000 I paid from like medical bills for all of my conditions that I, that I have to do. So it's insane. And, and see, that's, that's the very thing they're counting on. They're counting on you to be too tired or too worn out or too um, defeated to fight this. And mm -hmm. if you don't fight it, you could have appealed, you could have, but you didn't. So now so the how do you statute appeal? of limitations. You them? Usually um, <laughs> they don't make it easy. Uh, there's usually oh, they don't there's a form that you have to that at least the appeals i've done from from the patient um, perspective like how does a patient perspective are you talking just, from a provider or a patient perspective so let's talk about both as a provider they send me an email or a letter in the mail uh you know a snail mail letter and they say we're denying this claim have you considered these other options yada 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 um if you have any further information please fill out this, you know, nine page form. Um, and you're filling in all, and you're answering the same three questions over and over again, just in different, uh, they re, they put the comment in a different place and ask the question again. So you get frustrated as a provider saying, I just answered this. I just answered this, but I'll, I'll check another box and answer it again. And then you send it back and they deny it a third time. And, and you keep going through that process until they, until you either give up or they um, grant the claim. As a patient, it's a series of phone calls, and then they'll send you a hard copy letter and an email, and you got to fill out this form, print this out, take this to your doctor, have him fill it out, sign it, and send it back. Um, and then they, they, they ding you on little things like um, I, I signed my one time I signed my name and didn't sign CNM after it. Hmm. And so they sent it back, rejected it. Why? Well, you didn't put your credentials. Come on, man. It's all over every, uh, there's like three signature spots. I put it in every spot except for one and you're going to kick that back. Well, that's our process. So, and, and that just delays care. That just absolutely delays care because every time they send it back and forth, it's at minimum two weeks. It's just, it, the greed is just disgusting to me. So they, th here they talk about a negative customer experience and how honestly they just don't care. So in 2014, they wanted to add a new procedure to the PEXDX list to be flagged for automatic denial. So this is the automatic AI system that will just automatically deny thousands of claims without actually being reviewed. And the test is versatile. It's non-invasive. It's just a couple, couple hundred dollars. So the, they said like this would cause them to turn down an additional 17,800 claims a year that it once had covered and that these denials would create a negative customer experience and a potential for increased out-of-pocket costs. Um, the company acknowledged, however, they would roughly save $2.4 million a year in medical costs. So they added it to the list. <laughs> At the end of the day, they don't care if it saves the money. So back to Dr. Nick, when he received his first denial notice, he, um, let's see what he did. He did appeal. Then with a different, a different doctor reviewed the case and stood by the original denial. So this is, there's that back and forth, back and forth that 
records did not show you had a previous documented vitamin D deficiency. How are you going to show that you had a previous vitamin D deficiency if I wasn't tested for it and you're not paying for this test, you know? Precisely. So then he took his letter to an external review by an independent reviewer. Now the test cost $350. I think that this physician was making a point because who, how, who's an independent reviewer? Like, who do you take that to? And are they charging you money? Because what if you ended up paying another $300 just so that Cigna would pay a $350 bill? Unless you have the money to do it, just make a point. Yeah. And I think he was making a point, which I applaud him for, but this is why, you know, the normal person, you know, Joe Schmo down the street doesn't have the time, money or energy to ex ex like to do this. Right. So the external, the independent reviewer did agree um, <laughs> in late June, seven months after the blood test, not to mention what if they report you to a credit, uh, a collection agency because you haven't paid your bill, you know, and now yeah. they damage your credit score. <laughs> So seven months after the blood test, uh, this outside reviewer determined the test was justified, confirmed the diagnosis of vitamin, vitamin D defici deficiency, and Cigna finally paid the bill. But you see how it took, it took seven months. So um, Dr. Nick says that he's dumbfounded by the company's policies. It's not good medicine. It's not caring for patients. You end up asking yourself, why would they do this if their ultimate goal is to care for the patient? But that's not their ultimate goal, you know? No, their he ultimate said, goal is to make money for the shareholders. Exactly, exactly. He said, intellectually, I can understand it. As a physician, I can't. To me, it feels wrong. And this is what f has frustrated me um, since I became a nurse, is that there's, I'm here to take care of people. I'm here to take care and, and make their lives better. Um, but I can't do that because they can't pay for it because medications, treatments, exams, tests are so incredibly expensive that it becomes cost prohibitive to, even if they do have insurance, their copay is ridiculous. And then, you know, you find out six months or a year later, they're six feet under the grass because they didn't get the one medication that would have changed their life. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really sad. I, I mean, I don't have a solution, but I just do know that our healthcare system here in the States is very broken. I'm not saying that it's not broken in other places, but it is very sad. It's cost prohibitive. You know, my dad has rheumatoid arthritis and his medications are hundreds of dollars also a month. Thank God he has good insurance. Um, but it, for anybody who doesn't, you're be literally like crippled in pain because you can't afford your medicine you can't have quality of life. Your disease progresses because you can't afford it because you just weren't fortunate to be born with tons of money. Right. All right. But I wanted to end. So that was the bad with Cigna. I wanted to end on a good note. <laughs> um, on a positive note, United Healthcare plans to cut 20% of prior authorizations. So yay, if I had one of those like cool soundboards for the live, I'd be playing that yay sound. So uh, United Healthcare is moving forward with a plan to eliminate 20% of its current prior authorizations and implement a national gold card program. And um, that they're going to remove obstacles. I had seen a different article, but I believe it was for like assistive devices or I can't remember. I've seen a different one, um, but that's a move in the right direction. Someone did say that they were a little bit skeptical that they're going to wait and see, like they're cautiously optimistic. They had said, um, but so that's, that's, and I, I can't remember. I just, I'm trying to remember Mr. Midwife, you're going to say something. Um, well, we'll get, get through this part first and then, um, yeah, we'll shift gears just a little bit, just a little tiny bit. No, yeah, go ahead, because I can't remember what their prior authorization was going to be specifically for certain devices, I believe, or I, I don't remember. So you can go ahead. Um, so I woke up this morning with, with a notification on my phone. Um, today is World Health Day. Oh, okay. Um, and 
you know, speaking of insurance companies, they won't pay for things. And let's face it, um, as, as a society, America's health is kind of declining. In fact, I think the whole world's health is kind of declining. But so do what you can do. Make it so that you don't need the insurance company so you can tell the insurance company to go pound sand. Um, improve your own health just a little. Um, skip one can of soda per day and switch that out with water. Go for a walk a couple of times a week. Um, anything that you can do, just change your diet just a little. Um, you don't have to do great, huge, big things, but just make a few small changes that you can do to improve your own health. That way you don't need the insurance company so much. Mm -hmm. And when, as, as you're changing your own health, what are you doing to change someone else's? Encourage them to go take a walk. Get your husband up off the couch and say, come on, honey, let's go take a walk together. Now you've changed two people's <laughs> outlook on life. When he reaches for a beer, give him a bottle of water <laughs> instead sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, just those stupid little things. So maybe we don't need the insurance company so much. We can tell them to go bound sand. And I, I agree. I agree. But for like for me, coming from someone that like I'm vegan, I don't drink, I exercise. Like sometimes, unfortunately, we can do all the right things. But if we just have like a, a shitty set of genes dealt to us <laughs> and develop, you know <laughs> i i am down with you and that's that's the part that frustrates me the most is i have paid premiums for decades mm -hmm. i haven't you know i i go for a well a, a wellness exam just a general exam once uh -huh. every five years i don't go i just don't uh -huh. use the system but i yeah. paid into it for decades and yeah. now all of a sudden I just need a little help. Just that. Oh, and you're going to deny the claim. I need just the least amount of help. And now you're going to deny the claim when I've been paying in for all of these years. And that's what angers me because like you said, I understand that they're a company that they're there to make a profit, that it's not charity, but however, we, you know, we pay for decades maybe. And then all of a sudden when we actually need something, and it's like this with all kinds. Hi, Nurse Scott. It's like this with all kinds, whether it's like um, home insurance or all of these insurance companies, like they don't want to pay out. They make it almost impossible. And it's it's just, it's ridiculous. But I mean, you do I do like what you said and let's end on a positive note um, that let's do our best. There are th things we can take to be healthier, uh, whether it's um, exercising more, lifting weights, uh, eating healthier, less processed foods so that we don't. Okay. So nurse Scott said for more on world health day, join me and my nurse friends at 1230. So yeah, I'll be ending this soon. So you can just go jump on on nurse Scott's channel. <laughs> yep. I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> what's he, what's he going to be talking about today? Uh, world health day. Yeah. But like, so how to be healthier. <laughs> <laughs> Like, is that it? <laughs> I won't blow it for him. We'll, we'll talk about something that'll be fun and interesting. Okay. Nurse Scott, I don't know if I got a link, but anyway. So, oh, another thing, like another thing that helps to helps my mental health tremendously is volunteering. And actually, I think I'm going to go volunteer today. I have been um, pretty sedentary because I had surgery for the past month. So I can't really, I, I can't walk as much and all that. So I've been very sedentary and I've been, my mood has just declined so much. I've just had yeah. no, I have like, you know, aval, like inertia, no energy, abolition, like all of the basically depressive symptoms. So it, your, your body will thank you when uh, you move and, and are healthier. Yes, so, absolutely. Uh, everyone go over to Nurse Scott at 3.30 Eastern Standard Time or 12.30 PDT. He says they're going to go over a timeline of health successes. Mr. Midwife says he will be there. Mr. Midwife, thank you so much for joining. Do you have any parting words or any words of wisdom for anybody dealing with this? <laughs> no, I, I've, um, be vigilant. Don't give up. Um, if, if you roll over and play dead, then these folks win. Fight it. Somewhere come up with the energy to fight um, their denials. So. And, and I think at the end of the day, too, um, I guess if you have an option of whether you pick Cigna or an insurance company like United Healthcare that you know is actually cutting back prior authorizations, well, then don't pick Cigna because at the end of the day, your dollars are what hurts them. So. Yep. 
put your money where a company actually is is vouching for you or acting like they will go to battle for you. Absolutely. All righty. Let me end this broadcast. Thank you so much for watching. Okay. Bye.